guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is talking about the new Vampire Academy TV show. Now, I have read every single book in the series, and I saw the movie that came out in 2014, I believe. So, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I do know a little bit about this series. <laughs> so today, I'm going to be talking about the differences between the TV show and the book series. Some differences are very minor, some are kind of big. So, we're going to talk about all of it today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So the first major difference is location. In the book series, the location of St. Vladimir's, which is the school that all the characters go to, is in the forests of Montana, like in the middle of nowhere. When it came to the TV show, they decided to go for a more lavish location and went to Europe. Specifically, they filmed in Spain, which, as you can see by the cool castle that they're in and all the other stuff, it paid off. It's a really cool landscape. It's different, much different than the book, but I think it was a change that was kind of cool. <laughs> in the show, there is something called the Dominion, and within the school's walls, there is like a community of Dampier and Maroy, like, that don't go to school. Um, it's within, it's not specifically the school, but within like the walls of the community or right near it. And it's called the Dominion, just everyone. In the book, that does not exist. There are communities of Moroy and Dampier people, but they're spread out across the world. They're not inside the school itself. Um, or in the grounds of the school or next to the school or whatever it may be. That doesn't exist. Nothing called the Dominion exists. That is specifically for the show, which I do think adds some depth to it. In the book series, there's a thing called the communes, and it is a place where Dampier women choose to raise their children rather than, you know, ship them off to train to guard Maroi. Basically, be a normal human, in a sense. They stay home, they raise their kids, they have that sort of life. And it is like, I wouldn't say it's forbidden, but it's disliked if Maroi men visit. So it's a big no-no. They're like, don't go there. You know, they're disgraceful and no one wants to talk about them, but it's not encouraged to go there. In the show, they use it as a punishment. Like, if you're not good enough guardian, if you break the rules, you're going to go live there and become a breeding whore, basically. <laughs> it's basically a breeding ground so Maroi men can go there and have their way with women, so that way they can have more damn fears to protect them in the future. In the book, that is not the case. It is more like a choice. The Dampier women chose to go there. They weren't forced to go there. So they made it a little more um, of a bad thing in the show rather than it was in the books. I don't know how much I like the idea of just having the communes be a breeding ground, but uh, fine. You know, choices were made. <laughs> choices were made. One of the major changes that was made was that in the beginning of the book, Rose and Lisa escaped the school. And the movie from 2014 actually, like, bases off the book quite well. Like, every event that happens in the movie happened in the first book, for a majority of it. So it starts out with them. They had escaped the school after Miss Carp saw Lisa trying to heal a bird and told them they need to get out. And so they did. They ran. They hid in the human world until they eventually were caught and brought back. In the show, that never happened. In the show, Lisa took a three-month break after her parents died, which her parents and brother are dead in the books as well. Um, but they started out with like a flashback in a sense where they were all alive, got in a car crash, and then she took a three-month break from school to grieve before returning while Rose stayed at the school. So it's quite the difference. There are a few things that happen with the crash that are the same, like Rose being shadow kissed. Sorry to spoil if you didn't know that. <laughs> um, where Lisa brings Rose back to life and they have a connection. It's one-sided, sadly. Um, that still stays the same. But the running away from the school never happened. When it comes to Dimitri mentoring her in the book, uh, Rose, when they return, is almost expelled for her actions because, you know, Lisa's a princess and you can't be doing that. Um, and so, you know... They, Rose really wants to stay, obviously, so they work something out where Dimitri trains her so that she can get up on her training. Basically, he's forced to become her mentor so she can rise back up to where she used to be so she knows what she's doing. 
in the show, there is a leaderboard and Rose starts dropping on the leaderboard because she's getting distracted with Lisa and she's having a lot of issues with getting yelled at because she took her outside the walls and blah, 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 blah. But she falls on the leaderboard and then she asks Dimitri to mentor her so that she can get back up on the leaderboard, which is really important to her, which I don't know why, I did, but I mean, in that world, I can understand why that would be important. So instead of being forced to be her mentor because there was no other option, in this, she asked him to. It was a choice, not force. Which I guess is nice, but also, like, I feel like it would have more meaning behind it if it was because she was forced to be a mentor rather than asking. Another big change between Dimitri and Rose is that their age difference. In the book, it was a big storyline that Dimitri was 24 and Rose was 17 in the first book. That is one of the reasons why Dimitri didn't want to explore his feelings with Rose was the fact that their age gap, um, that they were both guardians, that he was her teacher, and that he would throw himself in front of her instead of Lisa. Now the show is only four, no, five episodes in uh, as of recording this. Um, so, you know, there's still more story to be told. But as of right now, their age gap is not as wide because from these shows, from what I've learned, Rose is in her 20s in the show and Dimitri is as well or close to it. So there is no issue with age. He was not forced to be her teacher. That was voluntary. So that's gone out the window. The only real issue, I guess, if he does, you know, he's like, we can't do this, is the guardian thing where he's supposed to protect Lisa, but he'll throw himself in front of her. That is still an issue that can occur, but the age gap and the teacher thing aren't a problem anymore. So, uh, and another big thing with Dimitri, because they changed a few things with these characters, is Dimitri's not Russian anymore. Like, in episode four, he calls Rose Rosa, which is her nickname in the books, which is adorable, by the way. It's so cute. But in the show, they say that he has a Russian background, and his name is Dimitri, but he's got a British accent. So I don't know if he was born in Russia, one of his parents was Russian, and then gave him the name, and then he, you know, spoke Russian as a child and then moved, because he's got a British accent. So there's no Russian left, <laughs> if it is. But at least they kept some of it, because I was concerned about that, because Dimitri is Russian, and the actor is not Russian. So... We'll see, I guess, how that progresses throughout the rest of the show. As within the book and the show, Lisa has spirit. It is a fifth element that she's specialized in, and she can bring things back to life and compel people. In the books, many vampires can compel people, but she's just really good at it, like it's easy for her. In the show, from what it sounds like as of right now, she's the only one who can do it, which is not that big of a difference, I guess. And with spirit, there comes complications. Sonia Carp, who used to be Mrs. Carp in the books, um, she is the only other spirit user that is known at this point. And because of her actions of bringing birds to life and other people to life, uh, it affects her. She's depressed. She's out of it. Um, most of it was because she couldn't specialize and they tormented her rather than her going nuts from her powers. But I think after tormenting her, the powers tormenting her back kind of got worse. As in episode four, when she was hanging out with her man, which I think they're really cute. And she heals a bird. Her eyes turn completely black, which is kind of um, not great. Not great. Um, Lisa has the same spirit, but she hasn't used it very much. As far as we know so far, she's only used it on Rose. So she doesn't have any of the side effects within the book. She had side effects of self-harm, depression, basically losing your mind. The more you use it, the less... I don't know sane you are, I guess, it slowly like tears away. In the book, Miss Carp turns Strigoi on purpose to get rid of spirit, and that may happen with Sonia in the show, but we don't know. We're not very far into the show as of right now, so things may change. <laughs> in the book, Victor is Lisa's uncle or honorary uncle, and he's dying of a disease and uses Lisa to heal himself of said disease. Like that's the whole first book. Dead animals are showing up at her door. He's tormenting her using his daughter, Natalie, and he uses Lisa to heal his sickness. In the show, Victor now has two, uh, two daughters, Mia, who used to be someone else's kid, but in the show, Mia, and Sonia are his two kids. And uh, from what it sounds like, he does have the disease like he did in the book, but he has no reason to hurt Lisa. 
because he knows Sonya has the same gift. So if he's going to hurt someone to heal himself, it'd be Sonya. But if he finds out that Lisa has it, maybe he'll lose, use Lisa. Maybe he will turn into the bad guy. But as of right now, I don't see a reason why he would do that. His character doesn't seem as a, like a, an asshole like in the books. He seems a little nicer. <laughs> in the book, Mia is a non-royal girl who dated Lisa's ex, Aaron, and had something with her brother, Aunt Andre. But she was just basically a mean girl who wanted to be better than everyone else. You know, social climbing mean girl. In the show, uh, she was to be wed to her, to Lisa's brother. And she's still a social climbing mean girl. But in the book, there is a big feud between Rose and Mia. And in the show, as of right now, that doesn't even exist. They don't really talk, like, at all. She doesn't really like Mia, as far as I know. But, like, they don't have a feud going on. That could change without the series. Maybe the feud will begin. But as of right now, there is no feud between the two characters, which was a big story point in the book. <laughs> Another big change throughout the book and um, TV show is the queen. The queen in the book, her name is Tatiana. She's She's been queen for a very long time, and she asks our girl Lisa to be queen after her. And a whole thing got after that. In the show, the queen is an old woman who's been queen for 200 years, and Tatiana is now a Moroi with a high priestess aunt, and she is royal, but she wasn't in the royal court, and she wants to, as Mia, social climb, but she wants to become a queen. So that'll be interesting, because that's a very different storyline. But I think it'll be intriguing to see what happens with that, because Tatiana's, um, interesting. In the book, Strigoi are like your basic Dracula. They have red eyes, they're super white, they're cold, they're fast, they're strong, they can't go out in the sun. You know, your stereotypical Dracula-type vampire. In the show, they made them more like zombies, which I'm like, come on. They're basically brainless killing machines. They still have red eyes, but they got sharp fangs and claws, and they're just... They're monsters, which I guess, you know, that's fine. You want to make the Strigoi the bad guys, but I thought it was interesting that they had, they were still, they were still smart. They were evil vampires and all they did was want to kill people, but they, they were smart. In the show, they don't have grace. They're not that smart. Like they were shocked that they could be in groups and actually like talk with one another. And it's like... <laughs> You made them brainless zombies, so that, I guess, whatever. Personally, that is not my favorite type of vampire of any kind, but I guess we'll see. I am not a super fan who nitpicks everything. If it's not exactly like the books, I'm not like, oh my god, what the fuck? I don't care. If it's enjoyable, it's enjoyable. Now, if they make a ginormous change, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. That's different. But when it comes to certain other things, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm not as judgy as some other fans can be. Most times when it comes to a TV show coming out, I have not read the book yet. I usually watch the show or the movie, and then I read the book. Which I guess in this case, I kind of did both. I watched the movie, went, that's pretty good, read all the books, and now I'm watching the show. So I did a little bit of both. Usually I watch the show or movie, and then I read the book. This time around, I read the book prior. So it should be interesting to see how the show progresses. Maybe I'll do another video once the season ends, just to talk about the overarching story of it. But... I'm intrigued. I'm hooked, and I can't wait to see what happens. The creator of the show is Julie Pleck, or producer, or she's part of the show. She created Vampire Diaries and worked on the uh, Legacies. She might have been on the originals. I'm not sure. She's done a lot of vampire content, <laughs> so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes because Vampire Diaries went pretty well. I mean, once Nina left, it kind of went downhill from there. But it had a, a good six strong seasons and then two other seasons. Um, Legacies got about four. It didn't have as much traction as Vampire Diaries. I don't know if she was part of the originals. That got about five, I think. Um, so we'll see how long this show goes. I hope it doesn't get canceled and that we get to at least see a few seasons because there are some storylines throughout the um, later books that I would love to see on screen. Personally, where Dimitri becomes a Strigoi. Because <laughs> that storyline between him and Rose is fun. The only issue is, is that now that they've made the Strigoi more like zombies, it won't be as fun. But we'll see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a good time making it. I always love doing ranty type videos because they're very easy to edit. I stand in one spot and I just talk. I don't know if you guys enjoy this, but I don't fangirl to a lot of people because I don't have a lot of people who like the same things I like. So when I get to fangirl about something I love, oh, I love it so much. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back again on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday and Monday with whatever I decide to post. I'll see you later, guys. Woo!